All right, what you see before you is a comparator circuit constructed from a 741 op amp, and it is tied into this ratio metric Hall effect sensor. And I've constructed another type of Hall latch. South pole of the magnet on the Hall sensor, LED comes on and stays on. North pole turns it off. South pole on the face turns it on. North pole on the face turns it off. All right, here is an illustration on how a hall voltage is generated. We have what is called a hall plate. This plate, it could be things such as indium antimonide, silicon, graphene, any number of other materials, even bismuth metal. Even as a magnetic field, oh, notice first, of course, there is a current, a constant current sent through the plate, and a magnetic field that is transverse to the current flow. What it is, as the magnetic field enters the plate, in this case perpendicular, the charges will move to the sides, creating a voltage differential that we call a Hall voltage. This Hall voltage will be amplified, and that is how we end up with a ratiometric Hall sensor, was one of these plates, a high gain differential amplifier, and maybe a little power supply regulation. All right, here's part of a circuit that I created with my little bismuth metal strip. I used an LM317 as a constant current source. And I set it for around, I think it was 250 milliamps or something. There's something you need to note that they don't actually tell you in the literature. Here is a hall plate. Now, mine didn't work very well, but this works on any hall plate out there. If you approach, and we're let's just, for argument's sake, say this is the top. If I approach it perpendicular, that strong magnetic field on the hall plate, the polarity will be uh, number four is negative, three is positive. If I reverse the magnet, then I will reverse the polarity with 3 being negative and 4 being positive. All right, here's the test circuit that I built for this demo. Um, like I said, it didn't work very well. I could detect the uh, magnetic field on my homemade hall plate. And what you do is here's your hall plate. Here's your constant current source. I sent 250 milliamps through the device. You notice this potentiometer right here is V-set. I adjust V-set with no magnetic field input that I have half of VCC out. And so when I bring the magnet down in one direction, V-out would swing more positive. If I reverse the magnet, V out would go less positive. This is exactly how your ratio metric or linear Hall sensors work. Hall plate, some kind of current source or regulator, and a high gain differential amplifier. Don't build this. This is just for illustration purposes. Here is a simplified diagram of a more commercial Hall ratio metric or linear Hall sensor. Again, here is your Hall plate. Here's your differential amplifier, and it's usually some kind of emitter follower output. This is, of course, analog, not digital. And with no magnetic flux, it's usually sitting around half of VS, or what I call VCC. And if you bring in your, your magnet, it'll either go more positive or less positive. This is a good illustration of the output from a linear or ratio metric Hall sensor. If you notice the relationship between the north and the south pole, 
the center voltage or quiescent point is half a VCC. In my system it's 12 volts, but here it's 5. The south pole will increase the voltage towards 5 volts. The north pole in the will decrease the voltage below 2.5 volts towards 0. Again, the south pole increases the voltage towards VCC. The north pole will decrease the voltage towards 0. Let's look at a spec sheet from the Allegro A1301 and A1302 linear hall sensors. All right, these devices have a quiescent output voltage that is 50% of the supply voltage, half a VCC. What is interesting, these spec sheets will also give you the sensitivity. In the case of the A1301, and we'll focus on that, it's 2.5 millivolts per Gauss. What is a Gauss? Okay, 10 Gauss is 1 millitesla. 1 millitesla is 0 0.001 tesla. A uh, magnetic, an MRI machine, for instance, has magnets that are around 1.5 tesla. And a good refrigerator magnet is 100 Gauss. The Earth's magnetic field is less than 1 Gauss. So in the case of this, if I have 10 Gauss of magnetic flux, on this Hall sensor, well that's 2.5 millivolts per Gauss times 10 Gauss, 25 millivolts. Thus, I can measure the magnetic field intensity fairly well. Also, they also of course integrate the Hall circuit and amplifier in a single chip, which re produce, reduces many of the problems of earlier um, chips. All right, here is a block diagram to the A1301, which is a fairly new device compared to those I used in my earlier videos. Again, hall plate differential amplifier, but in this case we've added a little more circuitry into it. These hall sensors are an integrated circuit. They're not like a transistor. They have multiple transistors, and Modern manufacturing allows laser trimming and so forth to create a very linear device. So if you're measuring 10 Gauss and producing 25 millivolts, um, that's, a fa that's fairly linear because what's, if you have 5 Gauss, you're going to have 12.5 uh, millivolts and so forth. So you can pretty well read magnetic intensity with one of these newer linear Hall sensors. All right, this is an illustration of what we call axis of symmetry or sensitivity. Notice there's a SOT23. This is a surface mount device that you might find under a capstan motor or fan motor. And the ones that I mostly use are the TO92s. In fact, that's all I use in my demos is a TO92. Looking at this up here, this side is the printed face. This is where you're going to find the part number. This is the printed face, printed face there. If you look at it from the top, you'll see Texas Instruments and the part number and so forth. You notice the arrow is going from the back to the front, back to the front. The printed face is considered the front. This is because, uh, this is a little bit of physics for you. A positive magnetic field is the south pole, and a negative magnetic field is the north pole. And so, what you got here, according to physicists, is magnetic flux flows from north to south. Thus, if you have a, so in this illustration, either uh, the north pole is at the bottom or behind, and the flux is going to flow through through the front. Why is that important to note? You'll find out momentarily. All right, let's look back at our A1301 spec sheet. And this is the uh, three-pin surface mount device. 
here is your hall plate. Here is how it is oriented. It's flat against the face, as you see here, and this is looking at it from different sides. It's actually it actually has a uh, rectangular shape or a square shape in this illustration, and there is a reason for this. If you look, if you take the south pole of a magnet and you're coming down on top of the uh, Hall sensor, remember the quiescent output voltage was at uh, half of VCC. As the south pole comes in on the printed side of the face, the vo output voltage will go more positive. If I flip the magnet around and come with the north pole on the printed face, it will go less positive. So it's important where you pl how these plates are oriented. In this case, it is as you see here, but there but things get a little bit more interesting with other devices. All right, let's look at the. A, a 1130, 31, and 32. This is from Allegro Microsystems. This is a two wire device, and what I want to note here is the hall plates are vertical to the faces and they can be placed to the sides. So a magnetic, uh, a magnet can come in from the, either side, right, left, or from the top relative to the device itself in a 3-pin TO92 package. This is a two-wire unipolar vertical Hall effect switches. That will be dis Hall switches will be discussed in the next video. What I want you to note, of course, is the Hall plates themselves are not necessarily flat on the face of the printed side. All right, we're going to look at another Allegro Hall sensor. It's the A1262. It's a 2D dual channel ultra sensitive Hall effect latch. We will discuss the latch itself in another video. But this makes it different in that we have two Hall sensors in the same TO92 package. This is uh, for a four wire device as opposed to a three wire. It has a X, Y, and Z axis. One hall plate would be vertical and the other one would be horizontal to the face of the device. You have two hall sensors. You have the, and it's a rather complex circuit in a way. It has all kinds of extra circuitry, sample and hold, a Schmidt trigger, demultiplexer, and two open collector MOSFET outputs. By this, this is used to detect, this can be used to detect motor speed and rotation direction. The electrical connections are shown down here in the corner has two outputs you would use pull-up resistors and this can be used directly with a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. Here we go again here's another view of the A1262 and it shows you all the different angles in which a magnet could be placed. It can be on the top, flat on the face, either on the sides and all over the place there's the electrical connections again. Okay this is the MLX 92251 it's made by an, a company called Melexis I believe they're in Belgium. Here is a this is, device is interesting in that it has two switched hall plates and its output and when used with motors and the proper magnets can tell you the speed and direction of a motor. And it is it is a little four pin device again. Uh, let's look a little closer into it. All right, continuing on with this device, when you're going clockwise and counterclockwise, you are looking at the this output as shown here in this chart. Very simply, a microcontroller such as Arduino 
should be able to read those two outputs and it will tell you the speed and direction the speed would be pulses and the uh, direction output will either be high or low to tell you which direction it's going in okay this if you can see it if not it's up on my it'll be up somewhere on my website here is your speed and direction outputs you they're open uh, drain so you will need pull-up resistors and here's the outputs that you could send to an Arduino uh, yeah this this works at 5 volts here is this illustrated again and here's how it would go with a motor here here is an illustration of a sensor flat face you're looking at it from the top here is your magnet and there's your motor control unit you can control the of course you can control speed and you can determine direction really interesting device if you can use it all right we've got a diagram here or block diagram of a hall switch or a hall latch I'm going to cut off the video at this point but I'm going to and we'll cover this in the next video but for starters what to expect yes a hall switch or a hall latch which I demonstrated at the beginning of the video has a plate has a differential amplifier but then we're going to add Smith triggers comparators and other circuits and so Thanks for listening to this first installment. Uh, please hit a like, share this video, and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. I'll have a link to this material in the description. Thank you for listening.